Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome back to Peak to Middle School. My name is Narwhal, and I'm here with Kyle. I just, uh, I fucked up the edge of my chapstick. And my That's... name is Luke. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with famous actor Luke. Yeah. Hello, famous, famous actor. actor Luke. If this comes out in a couple years, famous actor Luke. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Let's go. Uh, so, famous actor Luke. Kyle had a question for you. Right so, fa famous actor Luke. Um, being that I am uh, a uh, um, non famous actor, non famous actor yeah. pursuing my acting career, maybe. Uh, what can I do? What is something? What's your like pregame routine for acting? Like, how do you get in your zone? Are there well, any tricks of the trade you can teach us <laughs> for us other actors trying to make? Well, it? have your lines memorized. Memorize lines. Oh. Gotta That's have a hard thing for me. Can't I, write those on your hand okay. and look at it in the scene. It's not gonna work. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but that's really important. If you have them memorized, like so memorized that like you can just Damn say them right whenever, now. then you can think about your performance and stuff. If you're still thinking about like what the words are, it's bad. Yeah, that's um, true. And I mean, then like it depend depending on the scene, like I'll I might like do like a, a couple screams, like whoa for this last thing that I did that is coming out soon. Like I was dying and like I was in a lot of pain, so like. <laughs> I would like run around the studio and like scream into like my hands or something just to be like out of breath and yeah. like really like exacerbated or whatever. Oh. So I do that. And then, um, yeah, just stuff like that. That's interesting. Like I know for me, because I'm not, I, I know you guys probably take it really seriously when you're doing it. It's just, if I were on set and Luke is running around screaming <laughs> into his hands, I, yeah. I would be laughing. I can't, I would have a hard time. I think getting into character. That's not a comedy role. Yeah, it definitely takes some getting used to because like the first time I saw like like a co-actor like do something like that like I saw one guy like slam the ground with a sledgehammer before a scene because like, <laughs> he just got a sledgehammer out of the person's garage and was slamming it on the ground before the oh, scene. Oh, they like, brought his own sledgehammer. No. <laughs> but yeah, it takes some getting used to. But like when you like see like if that's what it takes to get in the character, you know, you're like, yeah, it's worth true. It. And it's probably like when you're in a like a environment where everyone's like an artist like that like you kind of get each other like yeah. there's times when my sister yeah. will be like oh like is it awkward when you do this or whatever like in terms of podcast stuff and it's like nah because everyone knows you're podcasting yeah. or like and i'm sure you guys are pros yeah like when you're Pretty acting much. like you guys can do weird shit probably but everyone like can respect it and like yeah know that it's normal yeah as long acting. as like the thing I like about like entering the industry now is like it seems like it's a thing of the past for just like directors and producers to just treat people like shit. Good. Like it feels like it feels like you just got to respect what people are doing. And some people may be super weird and like do <laughs> stuff that's like kind of unorthodox. But as long as they're being respectful, like you're good. You're good to go. Oh, I'm sure there's all the famous actors. Like I think of people like Shia LaBeouf when he's getting yeah. into a role. Like he probably does some weird ass. He shit. got like this giant like back tattoo for a role and like like a real, a, a real tattoo for a <laughs> role like that covered his entire back bro that's yeah i mean i mean if, if you're I mean, like yeah, if, if your whole to... life is acting yeah. like if that's your being is an actor like i kind of get it yeah he is, is not a good person <laughs> he just <though>. got <laughs> fired from his yeah, role right because he, yeah, he just got accused of like assault Fuck. from his ex yeah damn it is well, it his ex now elon musk's wife no, that's Grimes. Oh. His ex was FK, FKA Twigs or something. Wow, I just got two different EDM <laughs> artists mixed up. Wait, <laughs> never mind. Those sounded like gamer. I thought they were both like gamer tags or like. <laughs> I think they're both like EDM producers. FDR or something. Twigs. <laughs> FDR. FKA Twigs. FKA I don't know. I, I think they're music artists. Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. fuck Kyle Anders. Fuck Whoa, Kyle. Oh, that's Anders. you. It's me. I'm Twix. Oh, yeah. Fucking Kyle Anders okay. Twix. Guys, I have I have a I have a bone to pick uh, with airlines oh, okay. uh, because I was flying here from LA because I'm an actor and I live there. Wow, I was flying let's here. go! No big deal. Um, I don't understand why people can't just wait their turn to stand up and get their luggage. Yeah, <laughs> it's oh my like God, you're why right. do people stand up and just stand in the aisle waiting for their like just sit <laughs> in your seat? And it's, you it, can't go anywhere. It became apparent during COVID because they say like. Okay, it's to avoid crowds, like wait until the row in front of you leaves before you get up. Yeah. People still didn't do it. But I was thinking, like, why don't we just do that? Like, what are you accomplishing by standing up in the aisle 10 minutes before you can get off? The it's point? almost more efficient because yeah. if you don't have people all around you when it's your turn to get up, you can get up and get your bag easier. Well, yeah, the worst is when my bag's like a little bit behind me and I have to now search through a sea of <laughs> yeah. people to get my bag because they're all standing yeah. up fighting for their bags. Like, I'm in front of you. That's your problem that you got to see behind me. Let me get my fucking yeah. luggage and leave. Exactly. 
I um I also hate how when the, you go to baggage claim, okay, why do we crowd the front of the thing so much? I know. Let's just like just go just go on the other side and wait <laughs> until get you, you see your bag and then go up to the front. I get it. It's just if I'm the first one down there, I'm probably gonna stand there. I know, but you it's know like, I mean? and then everyone I guess kind of just crowds there, and it's like, we all just want to get out of there. That's that's why people do it. I know, it. but it's not that long of a delay to just <laughs> oh, let no. it go around the carousel. <laughs> I just people just are not patient. You know yeah. what's gonna be cool is when technology gets better to where, if you check a bag. You don't even have to go to a baggage claim because the airplanes will have like conveyor belts underneath them where they store the luggage up to your seat and you like pull it. So like where, on the floor next right. to your seat and then it delivers your bag and you pull it out and then you walk off the plane with your bag. So so like the aisle is a conveyor belt with the bags or or like where your feet are sitting under your seat that like opens up and the chairs fold and then your bag is there. I mean, how much space are we, is on this plane? It seems like. Well, but my point is the bags are already <laughs> no. on the plane. No, I, yeah, I know. That. You know what they're, I'm saying? The, they're on but, the bottom, but they're like stored and like compartmentalized. So you want to like have a conveyor belt installed and then also have the thing underneath where you're sitting be able to open exactly. which is a safety concern also you also then- need space because there's barely space anyways i couldn't <laughs> fit my suitcase below my seat but it's somewhere down there so if we reconfigure our spacing and our guys i'm just saying there's smart engineers out there that's true there are smart engineers <laughs> there are, out there yeah if we can go to mars we can make bags come to our seat I think the most important thing I can do as a, a dumb person that can't really provide much to the world <laughs> is I can I can offer up ideas and just hope that some smarter person can hear it and run with it. Like if I can just throw out like, hey, we need to, you know, fix the way we do airplanes or we need to I hate the way the sound of my car door when I close it, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Someone that, else is no that something that that's the first thing I thought of. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like we need the smarter people. It was like the college football debate when I, we were talking about should college football players get paid. I don't yeah. fucking know. Someone smarter than me knows. They can figure it out. And then, but but then the thing with that I is, I just need to raise whenever, the questions. Whenever someone ends up addressing one of these questions Kyle brought up and fixes it, Kyle's then going to take responsibility, claiming, "Yes, I was the one who thought of that." Yeah, because they probably reality, saw this clip because they definitely are watching this. Yeah, and yeah, and they see it and then they improve it. What like? I know you guys have like a lot of people that are still still in school listening. But if you had to guess, like, the majority of your listeners' career path, <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> I would say most of them are not in a career. No, not I know. But, yet. like, if you had to say, like, oh, no. what would they what would they do? Doing? Like, do you think you have, like, a big audience of, like, business people, like, future business people, big audience of future artists, big audience of future engineers, or a big, <laughs> big community of just undergraduate studies? <laughs> that is a know. great question. <laughs> that is tough. I think, I well, know. most of them... Like, obviously, like Kyle said, aren't in a career yet. Yeah. But if I had to guess, I think they're, like, similar to what I was in high school. Yeah, I, free thinkers. I think a lot of them are probably, like, maybe we'll try college, maybe go to college. But I don't think, like, we got any, you know, MIT computer science. I don't think we got any CEOs in here. I'm wow. sorry, guys. <laughs> But, no offense, but I don't know. Some Maybe. People, what if there is like an actual CEO listening? And, oh, that'd be hey. lit. I'd be, that's cool. I just think like I'm just thinking you guys are listening to us. So where does that put you? And that's you why my like, dad doesn't listen to you guys. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. He's yeah. a CEO, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. He wants to listen. He wants to buy your merch. Didn't do it. Then he just, just hasn't. He just hasn't. <laughs> Yeah. No. Well, the thing is, we do want to go on tour one day, so we can That'd come to Dallas so and, and we can get we can get your dad in front row. Oh, we'll bring him back okay. to the We'll say we have a CEO listener. <laughs> yeah, and then you guys can talk about like sex, and he'll be like, "Ah, I knew you guys when you were in fifth grade." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not as fun. That's got to be That's weird. True. There's he was a lot my of confirmation leader. <laughs> 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 he was. He was. He was our confirmation leader. We literally got confirmed into the Lutheran Church by my dad. <laughs> he must be proud. I yeah. kind of stopped going. Yeah, I, I stopped going. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, Okay, I had a question. The other day, Kyle and I were talking about, um, like, reading scripted stuff. Like, we were reading um, these AI robots wrote a Hallmark movie <laughs> yeah. script, and we read them. <laughs> and then afterwards, Kyle and I were talking about how, well, for him, he was saying it's really, it's almost impossible to read something that's scripted. And even if you have it memorized, to read it as if it's just you talking and not like you're reading a script. Mm-hmm. 
how is that really hard like to memorize a line and then to say it like it's you saying it and not like someone else wrote it like do you change a couple words in like can you change a little bit of the line or do some people want it specifically you must say it this way yeah some it depends on like the writer or like if it's a writer director or something like some people are like i'm trying to think uh whoever directed um marriage story i don't remember who directed marriage story but Steven Spielberg. It's a very famous director married to Greta Gerwig. I can't remember. But I remember Scarlett Johansson was talking about that movie. And Noah like, Baumbach. Noah Baumbach. So basically every single like hesitation, every single like look off like off to the side was all scripted. Literally no improv at all. Damn. Which is crazy. And then like Damn. but like I would say commonly, if like there's a word in a line that like doesn't really make sense and like it's hard for you to say and like it just doesn't, doesn't it's it mainly if it feels right for the character or not it's like doesn't flow then yeah you can change it and most people wouldn't get upset mm-hmm. for the character though it not should be for for, the it should always be for the character yeah. yeah but like obviously like if you're an actor and you just for some reason like can't say february <laughs> like <laughs> february, you might need, february. To, might need to ask the director like hey can we change this to march i just can't say february <laughs> yeah yeah it's too hard <laughs> well it's cool when you watch the office bloopers and they show like cut after cut of the same take or whatever or the same scene it's cool to see like they'll change words a bunch yeah because that's like the same idea because that's like all improv and like Mm -hmm. an improv you just have a goal of a scene and then you just trust like these amazing comedy actors to just like do it and like that's just like all steve carell would do like steve carell just sit in front of a camera like in the office when he's just talking to the camera and just riff (laughs) that's that's crazy i mean it's probably cool because like He's so able to get into that Michael Scott character that, like, after a while, because obviously the the office starts off and it's kind of like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. It's and then once they kind of all find themselves in their characters, that that's the first show that I really noticed that in, where, like, you can tell the characters are growing. You can tell the actors are growing yeah. into their characters. And they're just, it gets so much better at the end because they just, it's probably just automatic. They just are in their character's head and they just say the same things that their characters yeah. would say. Yeah. Do you have any desire to do, um, like, improv like stage acting at like an improv club uh i've done improv classes before and like i i would want to do that just because like i want to keep training and stuff but i don't really have a desire to be like on like saturday night live or like Mm. ucb theater or groundlings or something i think i don't know i i I like improv a lot but it like puts a lot of pressure on me and like i don't really like it like i don't really like trying to find a way to be funny out of nothing like i would much rather go off of a script and if improv is required like fine but like i don't know i like creating like dramatic characters more than comedy a little bit but i i want to do everything if any comedy directors are listening can you fake cry (laughs) it's not fake crying it's real crying it's kyle they're real tears dude but can you yeah i mean i i'm not that good at it to be completely honest i need a lot of like prep time Mm. um like i need to get really into it and like really upset and i'm like yeah, some people can just turn it on like that, and like I'm trying to get there, but like it's hard. It's yeah. it's pretty hard. Well, like, it doesn't have to be specific things, but when you're trying to be in a sad scene, are you mm-hmm. are you just thinking about like the worst days of your life or like all the problems in your life? What are you supposed to think about? This is interesting. This is an interesting dilemma because there's like two distinct tracks of acting, and it's imagination and substitution. So substitution oh. is what you're this talking is like about. A course, right now. I so love substitution that. is what you're talking about, which is like you bring things in from your own life okay. that would make sense in the scene so like if your mom died in the scene like you think of a family member that passed away or friend and you bring back those memories imagination is like trying to find the emotions in that imaginary scene so like Mm. you're in space and your dog dies how would i react if i was in space and my dog dies you know like and so that's what i would rather do because i don't want to bring up like past traumas and it's not super healthy so yeah but i do do substitution sometimes because i can't always find like the imagination exactly. in, the, in a yeah. scene when I'm it's like 1960s and like I'm a revolutionary <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do that. Have you ever like what if you're in a scene or like I guess any film and there's like a line that like the writer wrote and you just like think it sucks or like it's not funny? <laughs> like if it's supposed to be funny and you're just like I I can say it but it's not going to be fucking funny. Do you give advice on like maybe we should try this or are you just like all right well I guess I'm just going to do this. Well. Yeah, it depends like on the power dynamic a little bit. Like if it, like right now as like an aspiring actor who hasn't really been in anything huge, if I get on like a big set and like there's a line that a professional writer wrote, I'm like I'm going to say it no questions asked. <laughs> yeah. But like if it's like a student set that I do and like 
I'm like, hey, this doesn't really make sense. What if I tried this? Like, yeah. That's like the collaborative like form of filmmaking, but it's like usually I'm just going to say it. Like yeah. I'm just an actor. I'm just trying to make their vision come true, you know? Okay, another question. So th- I was thinking about this when I was watching The Office bloopers when they just they, – they try to do the same scene over and over and over and they keep laughing or they keep someone keeps fucking up. <laughs> how annoying does that get when that happens? And how bad do you feel when you're the issue? I would feel so bad if, I, if like, we couldn't move forward because of me. I had a scene like that in the Bob Zula, which is on Prime Video, if you wanted to watch it. Amazon um, Prime. I've Let's seen go. it. Amazon Prime. Go watch it. Um, I had a scene like that, and I just, like, me and, like, my older brother character, like, couldn't get through a scene, and, like, we just kept laughing, and our director was getting, like, kind of upset. It's like, hey, we only have this location for another hour. Can you yeah. guys pull it together? So, like, it does look like a lot of fun, like, in bloopers, and it is, but, like, also, like, you're usually on such a tight schedule on a film set. So like usually not the actors, but like the producer and director start to get annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay guys, can you be professional please? Yeah. But most of the time it's chill. Like, especially in the office when they're like, they're just have one location and they're just like riffing the entire day. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's kind of clutch. They have the whole, they have that set and they film like 80% of the show in that. You can go there. Space. It's in, it's in California, I think. To Which, that building. They still have the same so, set set up? No, it's like, a, it's like an actual office building that they shot in. Like, oh, you know the oh. exterior of it? I think it's in, like, Pasadena So or they something. actually... Oh, they actually shot it there? Yeah. Well, n- not, oh, not in Scranton. That's in California. Yeah, not in it's, Scranton, but, like, but that building. But, like, the outside scene. Yeah, that's it's that same. same thing. Oh, okay. Because you can see, like, behind-the-scenes stuff of, like, the trailers in the little parking lot. And, oh, like, you're right. So, yeah, they shoot it there. Damn. Also, wow. if you guys watch Parks and Rec, the we went there. Pawnee in, City Hall is Pasadena City Hall. It's in Pasadena, they California. They at the city hall. No, but like the the exterior, like that's oh. Pawnee City Hall. Damn. Which is cool. Yeah, it's dope. When you guys came over today, uh, Luke went to the bathroom, and when he was in there, you didn't get to hear this, but Kyle said, John, there was a girl at the drive through of Starbucks that looked like your type. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I don't know. It's just your type. Mm-hmm. Now, I need some discussion here on this topic because I need to know what made you spark that and why does it qualify as my type? Okay, well, <laughs> first of all, uh, we get up to like the drive through and the per- the barista is very talkative to Kyle. And I was like, oh, she may be flirting with Kyle a little bit. Mm. She was just, she was just nice. being very nice, very kind, may, n- may nice, have not been flirting. Nice lady. But Kyle's like, I... She's not really my type. I think she's John's type. Whoa! What, what? does that mean? I, <laughs> do I have a gross type? No, it's no, a. No, she's no, pretty. No, no, she's pretty. This is making it sound way more mean than it than it was. It wasn't like I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is totally something John. Would I said, yeah, you know, she's pretty, and she's just like, um, yeah, she's, describe she's, the type though that you think I, this I, is John. I, I, don't know know how to I just want to know why you thought, like, what about it made it seem like my type? Okay, so for one, the first thing I noticed was she looks like your ex, which I still, well, which I was, I told you. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that, that was That's, step one. Yeah. And I just know that, like, the people that John finds attractive or that he's like, dude, look at this girl. Do they all look the they same? Just, they just, it's that kind of vibe. Like, I just got that vibe from her. Like, okay. this is what to, this I is also what John, think John would vibe particularly well with, like, an extrovert like more so than an introvert because you like to have like deep talks and you like to do things like not necessarily like big groups of people but like you're always trying to do activities mm. and she seemed like she was she talking seemed, she's very talkative she seemed like a fun person to talk to that's funny you say that my sister and i literally a few days ago we had this deep like heart to heart for like two hours and we were just talking about life and she's like what's your type like what do you want and i was like basically we came to the conclusion that if they, if i was dating a girl like my sister who's extremely extroverted, I would go fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. So I don't know because if you guys think that I would want an extrovert, but like when I think of dating someone like my sister, like I couldn't do it. So would you rather date someone like yourself? I don't know. I don't know. It's (laughs) been a while. Because like I think about dating someone like my sister – and there's like aspects of her, I guess. It's, it's weird because I don't want to compare. Why to are we sister. talking <laughs> about <laughs> sister? I'm not, I'm not saying dating your no, sister. I know, no I one know. wants to date their sister. But like, I guess I'll say like from, Some from my experience, oh, I'm man. like kind of introver- introverted, and I would want someone that is like really outgoing and like will take me to do things or mm. like will have ideas to do things. Because like I want to do those things, but I don't like always have like the desire, and I don't want to do it alone. And so yeah. like, an extrovert would be fun. Okay. But, like, anything else that made you think I would like this girl other than just that she looked like an ex? She just – I don't even know what else to say about it. She just seemed like – Did she have a nice jaw? She had a mask on. Oh, fuck, dude. So, right. I don't know. 
Yeah. Maybe you can go check out Starbucks. No, we are saying you should just go through the drive thru a bunch of times <laughs> and just see if you talk to her. I, I just change keep outfits, put on put glasses on, yeah. and go back in. Head yeah. back for a second coffee. Uh, <laughs> what's your number? The thing that sucks about scenarios like that, I hate when you have an interaction with someone that could potentially be your soulmate and they're just like hot as shit. But you just know you're never gonna see them again, and it's like, there's what could then you really do about mate. it without well, being creepy? Do you believe well, in soulmates? <laughs> there's a way to like not be creepy, like, like, like hitting on like people that are like serving you is always really weird because like you don't know if they're just being nice, and you never want to assume that yeah. and like make them feel uncomfortable. So I think like what you should do is leave your number when you leave. Because then it's all in their power. Like you don't badger them for their number. You know, yeah. leave yours, and if they are interested, they will text you. The only thing is, how does she know which number of oh. the people at the table? Well, just it was. say like guy in green shirt, or just write it. Like yeah, when you're yeah. leaving say, your tip. That's true. The hot one that was staring at you all <laughs> night. <laughs> it, it, if you're memorable to her, she'll probably remember who you are, and she'll maybe call you. Yeah. But don't make not. anyone feel uncomfortable when they're you know bringing you your food or anything. Just when you leave, leave your number and fate. You know? I've never done that. I, I could try it. I have done it and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. But but now I know, you know? No, I, I shoot my shot all the time. I have like a 10% success rate, but I just always shots. try it. And 10%. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. If they don't respond, yeah. I'm never going to talk to them anyways. Great. 10% is pretty so good. So I'd rather just send it and see what happens. If they don't respond, I'm like, all right, cool. Great. I don't That's know true. you anyways. That's the best way to look at it. Yeah. Um. Okay, now... <laughs> just for John us. has nothing to say. No, no, John no, just I, lagged for a second. No, no I, but wait. I was, I was telling you guys, like, because you just brought up ten percent. Um, I want to see if you guys remember because we talked about this recently. Oh shit! But what is uh, the successful audition rate for a working actor? Mm. What was it like four percent? Seven. It's between four and eight percent. So if you're oh. a good actor and you're auditioning regularly, you'll book like. Six percent of the things that you audition for, but that doesn't count for like A-list people, right? No, because they don't audition. But like, okay. let's say like TV actors who are like still auditioning, like. But like, who, uh, when who you say still TV actor, like, like how big like are host, we talking? Like, I'm talking about like people who make their living acting, like co-stars and like guest stars on TV and stuff. Like, but not like I'm Stranger to, Things cast. No, because they're good. Because they're <laughs> yeah. like the leads. So but you those audition. Kids totally audition. But like, I know they audition, <laughs> but before then, they probably okay. had like 50 no's. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, maybe like true. a side character in like so like a guest character like I don't know like someone like Alexi in Stranger Things oh. who's only there for a couple episodes mm. and probably won't be in the next season maybe yeah that's like that was a Russian dude right yeah 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 he was good though and I've seen I, him around I think in other stuff where was he I don't know around oh nice like behind around see around <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool um no but I what I was gonna say before I lagged was. <laughs> I just realized the other day at the airport, two things that I do have two airport stories. Okay. Wow. One of them was I had this big revelation, like mind fuck that Netflix stands for like internet flicks and like flicks are movies. movies. Whoa. So it's like internet movies. I didn't know that either. And I, I never, I, it all I mean, maybe it's blew not. Up. No, because Netflix started where you would order DVDs online yeah, and then they would send it to your house and yeah. you could keep it as long as you want. Then you send it back. So it's like internet flicks. It's like Blockbuster Amazon. Wait, what is Blockbuster? Netflix was like Blockbuster Amazon. It was like, you get the movies, but we send it to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kinda. yeah. Netflix yeah. is way ahead of the game. And I don't really know what the term Blockbuster. Like, does it no, bust do you a know whole what, block? You know what you know Blockbuster, blockbuster is? The store? Yeah, no, no, no. I know that. I'm, I'm just saying the term Blockbuster. Oh, you're busting the block because people are so... There's such, such a, a long movie. line. It's yeah, like, I don't know how line. that term originated. Probably the, someone the first busts all over the block. Blockbuster was... <laughs> It's between Jaws and Star Wars, but mm. like that that's what's considered the first blockbuster. But yeah, I guess it's got to be cuz like you're waiting in line on the block. So yeah, you're busting I guess. the block. So then that in and out in Colorado was a blockbuster cuz it went <laughs> like miles and miles. I mean, I guess or yeah, sure. So people um, were waiting in miles and miles for blockbuster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then while I was downloading my thing to watch on the flight, which it's first of all it's really cool that you can now download stuff on Netflix. Yeah. Um, but you guys remember that thing from back in the day, like middle school, where <laughs> you'd click on a video on Twitter or something, thinking it was like some funny video, and it was just like a loud porn scene, yes. like max volume. <laughs> so I was walking to get food, and I witnessed this whole thing. This guy was probably like 
39 with like a two-year-old kid or something and his wife was next to him or the kid was in the middle basketball yeah 39 yeah he looked like he could he could hoop yeah (laughs) you don't know he was in a league did he have his trophy (laughs) he was a little heavy wearing his uniform (laughs) um probably a few too many beers but he uh like i walked by him as that happened and it was like oh 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 yeah (laughs) and like really loud and it was there's no one in the airport and my sister didn't know i was walking with my sister and she looked and she goes what was that? Like, I think it's a cat getting hurt. <laughs> and, oh, I, and I was like, oh, Aww. yeah, I don't know what that was. I knew. <laughs> and as we kept walking, I, like, looked back, and the wife, like, was, like, hitting him. She's like, turn it off. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and their baby was in the middle. See, like, you want to think that one of his friends just sent him that, but at 39 years old, he, I, <laughs> he might have just had it open. <laughs> in an he airport. He just been <laughs> he looking just had at it porn. Open. On full blast. with the. You said there was a baby, too, right? Well, it may have not been that day. Well, Maybe it, he pulled up Safari to pull up his boarding pass, and like that's what was there. Oh, yeah. Bro, you got to exit out of that shit. <laughs> Dude, have you guys ever thought that you were disconnected from Bluetooth, and you weren't? And then you started like watching something, and it played on a Bluetooth speaker? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Uh, yeah, I've done that with like Snapchat videos, like where I'm playing music for everyone, and then I open the Snapchat video, but it's nothing. Yeah, I've never like done bad. it with porn, but I got... The other day, it was like... Uh, I was with my family, and it was like 11 p.m., and everyone was getting ready to go to bed and i was in the bathroom and i w- didn't watch porn yet but <laughs> i watched <laughs> i didn't get my fix for the day but i watched uh like a youtube video from penguin zero you remember yeah. penguin zero yeah. yeah yeah and it started blasting on like our speaker in the kitchen and my mom like freaked out but i was just like thank god that i did it then then like imagine later imagine if it was the middle of the night or like yeah yeah so yeah um <laughs> Anyways, Luke's here. Um, I am. Luke, you came to visit. How has it been seeing us? <laughs> it's been horrible. <laughs> you guys look the same. Uh, no, it's been fun. You know, I came and I'm staying with Kyle at his apartment. He's got a great couch. You know. Kyle and Jordan. Um, New Year's Eve was recently. Happy New Year. Happy everybody. New Year, yeah, happy New Year everybody. Guys. It's, is it's now January pretty, 11th, pretty deep into the I New think. Year. Well, we celebrated New Year a couple days ago. and <gasps> My birthday was two days ago when this episode comes out. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. Thank you, guys. No, it was... Uh, happy birthday. You're right. I'm looking at it. December. Two days ago. So. And my birthday is in 15 days from when this episode comes Let's out. Go. Yes. Oh. Mine's in like two months. Uh, you, you can guys, still don't. wish me happy birthday. You guys should do me a favor and give me a birthday gift and go leave a review on the Apple Podcast app to get us to 500 reviews. Luke's done it. Luke! <laughs> Luke hasn't done it. No, okay. I've told Bad you guys this. Friend. I haven't done this yet because I've been here since the beginning and I want to be like the like the 500th or something. Or but, like, but the, like you could thousand. also just be one now of the future 500. Yeah, but I want to be like the one that sends it over. I want to <laughs> make you guys do something crazy. I want to be responsible for making you guys do something crazy. All right, guys, before we move forward today, we're going to hop into the sponsor of today's episode. Support for Peak to Middle School is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology advancements to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. There comes a point in every man's life where he needs to shave his balls. And when that point came for me, I used my face shaver. And that's not the right move. What you do, what you should have is a Manscaped shaver. Their new lawnmower 3.0 comes with a built-in LED light. It is extremely quiet, so no one will even be able to hear you when you're shaving. They also added a new battery, so you can shave for 90 minutes at a time. I don't know if it's going to take you 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a full-on jungle down there, it might take you 90 minutes. But uh, it's also waterproof. Uh, it's not going to cut you. That is huge for me. I've been bloody before, and when you get bloody before a big night, it ruins the whole night. No one wants blood there. The Lawnmower 3.0 also offers a stand-up charger, so you put it in your bathroom, plug it in, people walk in, they know how well you're groomed. Listen, guys, it's 2021. It's a new year, so if you need to treat yourself and get yourself something that will make you feel good, look good, definitely get the Lawnmower 3.0. Kyle and I absolutely love it, and we can't recommend it enough. If you guys are interested... You can get 20% off and free shipping with code PIMS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with code PIMS, P-I-M-S, at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Luke, how did we do? How was our acting in that ad? That was really good. You I know, wasn't even acting. Yeah, Kyle definitely did not get it on the first take, but, <laughs> you know, he did pretty good. You know, you guys you guys have the have the gravitas to be on screen. Whoa. You know? I don't know what that means, but that sounds nice. Yeah, I and mean, you did this too. I have no desire to ever be an actor, but I do have a desire to be like in front of the camera, you know? Like I I've told Kyle 
over the years like oh you know i have no desire to be a comedian but i've realized the more i do this and the more i desire to go on tour it's like in a way i kind of like i never in my whole life thought i would say that but it's kind of in a way it's it's like being a performer kind of yeah no it definitely is this is definitely a skill and it's a skill that you guys have gotten a lot better at since (laughs) the beginning and like i think it's crazy but like if you guys were to go on tour would you just do a live podcast or would you try and like do a stand-up routine like would it be a little bit more scripted i mean that's hard because that's so far down the line but if we were to do it now it would probably be like a live podcast i don't see either of us having really a stand-up routine you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but if you like took the time to like write something, like yeah. a two-person comedy thing, I bet you could do it. Yeah, yeah, I think we could make something as long as we practice and could make it feel authentic yeah. and do it multiple times and it still feels authentic cuz that's the biggest thing is we don't want to like have something scripted where like if we do it in 10 cities and it just feels like boring cuz we've yeah. done it so many times, but like I think there's a way to do it where we could write something. I think in when I envision it, I would like to think of it as like a variety show where yeah. i've where you go and like we do a little bit of podcasting but maybe we interact with the people there mm-hmm. we have some people come up on stage it's kind of like tiny meat gang yeah like cody yeah, and noel cause... like they do a lot of their songs and then they do just like sitting down like roasting the audience and then they just talk and so like yeah that'd be sick yeah. i think like the coolest thing for me would be like just talking to the audience and like getting a little bit of back and forth and i don't know how feasible that is on a stage like that but i think it would be cool just to have that aspect of like some dude in the back just goes like yeah fucking whatever <laughs> do, you, do you think you guys would get like stage fright or do you think you'd be fine in front of like actual people doing this it's hard to know dude i don't think so i've always like thrived off that feeling of like not in sports but in like in high school like i loved emceeing stuff mm. and like did the talent That's show true. and assemblies and stuff and obviously it's way different when it's like your own original content but i feel like i would enjoy it i'd be drenched Sweat. Be sweaty. Yeah, you I gotta be, wear black. I would be, yeah, I'd be wearing black. But also, I think when it's people that are coming to see you, it makes it a little different because if I was just a part of a play, they're not necessarily yeah. coming to see me. You know, yeah. they're literally coming for John and I. So it's so like, like it makes you feel, feel better more confident. Yeah, yeah, but then also, also at the same time, it puts a little more pressure on you because like it's on us. Yeah. yeah, it's weird saying this as an actor, but I am like really still terrified of like speaking in front of people. Really, but. Like I had a scene recently where I was a priest and I had to speak in front of like a congregation of extras Mm -hmm. and it was so much easier when I was like in character. Hmm. Like I couldn't do that as Luke, but like I could do it as this like priest and I could, I could say this like sermon or whatever. Cause like it wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Cause it's like you you can disconnect from you and your character. Yeah. Cause like the same way you guys are like kind of different when you're not podcasting as Mm -hmm. you are when you are podcasting. It's like, you just turn that on. Yeah. And it's something different. Yeah. It's true. Um, I, uh, oh, so I filmed like a variety show for this one guy who's now, uh, kind of like canceled cause he's the worst person ever. And a lot of stuff got out about him. Not even going right to say on. his name, but I filmed this show for this guy that I used to, who was a big YouTuber at the time and he went on tour. But what was so cool about it was his fans, like he sold out this whole show. There's probably like, I don't know, like a thousand people there maybe, but they're all like loyal fans and so they all had like knew the inside jokes of his channel and of his like personality. And so like there's a certain thing where they would like stand up like the whole crowd stood up, put their arms out like this and started making microwave noises like <laughs> zzz, and it was like a thousand people doing it. What the fuck? And he didn't even plan it like they just did it. And I thought I was like, that's so fucking cool. Like imagine we go perform Kyle voice cracks. And all the fans <laughs> yeah, go, that's fucking the- <laughs> voice crack, dude. I just, yeah, that would happen. That's the thing. You haven't had one this episode so far. I'm kind of disappointed I'm not getting the Pims experience. I know. That's true. I think it's probably because it's the it's the three-person episode, so it's like a little less talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you just make him the most comfortable. Kyle's yeah. most at home when you're right next to him. Yeah, I mean, I would agree, but whenever we play Xbox together, he voice cracks <laughs> all the time. Yeah, so, <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I was actually thinking about it the other day, and I was laying on my back trying to sleep. And I could like feel myself starting to snore. And I was thinking maybe I need to get like my adenoids out or some shit. And what maybe we, that's why. What does that have to do with anything? Maybe that's why my voice cracks because like oh, my throat's constricted or some shit. Maybe. Maybe it's not. But that would be cool if I got my tonsils out yeah. and then suddenly it's I fixed. need to do that too because apparently I have a really pro- big problem with loud sleeping. You are a loud sleeper. Like, 
<laughs> last time when I was here to film a podcast, after that, me and John slept in the same room together, like after we were celebrating your birthday. <laughs> and I was really sick at the time, so that's another thing. But apparently I snore all the time. But John had to leave <laughs> at 2 in the morning because I was being too loud. Bro, and I was moaning in my sleep. <laughs> Luke was like like there was a point where I was actually worried. I thought like he was like dying. He was like <laughs> and I'm like I had a sinus infection. And I tried I tried I was like, yo, are you good? And he just didn't respond, so I figured he was asleep. But what about this time? Like I I mean, I was I was upstairs and you were sleeping on the couch, but like Willick's, I heard complaints. Willick and Jordan said something and Nick, but <laughs> it's, it's whatever. <laughs> I'll figure it out. No, it's, it's not like that. It's not as bad as snoring. It's more of no. just some subtle noises here and there. Yeah. I think I kind of do that too because every time, maybe it's just because it's my sister and like she just wants to find a reason to get mad at me. But like anytime <laughs> we have to share a bed on vacation or whatever, there's, I just push crack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you go. Uh, she always gets so mad at me when I sleep. Like I just make noise in my sleep. Apparently I moan and groan and like probably do the same shit you do. So my sister. Okay. Sleeps with her socks on every single day of her life. That I do too. Psychotic. Really? What? Why? Every day? Yeah. Damn. Well, well, okay. So it depends. If I've been wearing, so- like, let's say I showered earlier in the day and I've been wearing socks Did longer. Did you dry yourself off after the shower? No. Listen, I've been <laughs> doing no that. I've been drying my back recently. Okay. <laughs> you know, wet my I, I showed is Kyle like... today. <laughs> I showed Kyle the other day. I showered and I was like, I dried my back for you. I thought you were kidding. It was not dry. Well, I tried. <laughs> it was <laughs> really wet. So. <laughs> That's what shirts are for. Um, but I forgot oh. what I was saying. What were you Socks, talking? Morgan? Oh, yeah. So, like, if I shower earlier in the day and I've been wearing socks for a while, I'll take off my socks when I go to sleep. But if I, like, just shower and, like, I'm getting fresh into bed, I'll throw on some warm socks. Mm, I and can I'll get sleep, the, I, sleep like that. Yeah. No. I, I, I'll do it sometimes, probably, like, 15 to 20% on. of the time. If my feet are cold when I get in bed, I can't warm them up unless I have socks. Like, it's impossible for my feet to warm up in bed. Well, that goes into, like, the discussion you and I were having in the car. Like, I'd always rather be uncomfortably hot than uncomfortably cold. Yeah, oh, I guess that's true. I'm the, I would always be too cold. Because I sweat so easily. I do, And too. then I get really grumpy when I get hot. I do, too. But do, this, the feeling of, like, not being able to warm yourself up is one of the most helpless feelings ever. When you're just that cold. Yeah. I would hate that. And I guess, like, I'm from Texas, and so I'm uncomfortably hot a lot. But, like, yeah. I come here, and I'm, like, in the studio, and it's cold, and I'm like, this is, is this not cold as fun. Are you cold right now? Not right now, because we've been talking for a while. But when I first got in here, it's yeah. It's pretty cold. Yeah. But our studio, battle the our studio is always cold. Um, so I went to your apartment yesterday, and something dawned on me that I think I'm, like, acutely aware of issues with toilets. What? Because you got a plumbing there's problem? A, no. Plumbing? Plumbing. <laughs> plumbing. <laughs> there's a lot of people's houses who I go to, and I'm standing up peeing, but I lift the seat up, and the seat, like, doesn't stay up. Mm. And you, you used my bathroom, didn't you? Yeah, but on yours, it, like, barely stays up. It bugs me every time. But then I've been to a lot. This has happened, like, ten times in my life where I've been to someone's house, and I, I go to the bathroom, but the seat doesn't want to stay up, so it keeps falling over. And then I, afterwards, I tell the person yo like your toilet seat doesn't stay up and they're like what do you mean yeah it does so either i don't know how to use a toilet or other people <laughs> don't realize that it do- that it do- like doesn't stay up you didn't bring that up you didn't bring that up to me though yeah because i wanted to talk about it now i, I think your toilet seat doesn't work no it-, it works you have to push it up it doesn't fall down though it looks like it's gonna fall down but it won't yeah, i know but it's kind of mm-hmm. scary because if it, it- falls it'll, down, it'll sit like this yeah it'll sit up like that at that angle have you guys ever had the toilet seat collapse mid p and your stream hits it no. As it falls down and it sprays everywhere, I haven't had that happen. Uh, no, I don't drop the toilet seat. <laughs> Me I neither. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you have. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just it kind of bothers me. You should try and fix that. You know, you should. You're you're no. an adult now. You're living not at home. You should learn how to fix things around your apartment. It's not even broken. It's just you like just tighten it a little bit and it'll stay up. No, the Get problem Kyle is it's too tight. Is, is the issue? It's too tight. And so, like, when Loosen I... Loosen it, then. No, I like it, because when I cl- close the lid, I don't have to bring it all the way down. I can bring it, like, halfway, and then it'll just slowly go down. It's great. Okay. okay. Uh, also, my bathroom is super short. My toilet is really low to the ground. Have you ever pooped in my apartment? It is really low. Very low to the <laughs> yeah, ground. Yeah, it's really low. Um, So, <laughs> this part, this is, like, I've been saving this until before the segments, because I, I think it's going to be a good, good little bit here. Do you guys ever walk around your house or 
just a place of privacy. Maybe you're in your car where no one else is around and just whisper a phrase to yourself like over and over, like not anything, in, just something that's stuck in your head, One like phrase. a song, but more just like a word or a phrase. If there's like a song stuck in my head, like a TikTok song, like I'll like say that one part like over and over, but I don't know that like I'll just be like around the house, like whispering to myself, like banana bread, Santa Claus is here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do that sometimes. I actually, when you brought that up, I just realized I've had uh, that song we listened to by Lil Uzi Vert stuck in my head the whole Which time. One? We've been throwing money in a spiral. Oh, that's a <laughs> good that's song. song. Yeah, I just had song. that on repeat in my head the whole time, and I just yeah. realized it now. And you get fixated on like what the one line. So is that, that you what know? you're talking about? Like a song stuck in your head? No, but w- it's weirder when you do it with words because I, yeah. I actually, I know what you're talking about. I'll, yeah, okay, say your thing. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna say mine, but I want you guys next time you do it, I want you to write it down because a lot of times you do, you do it, but you don't realize you're doing it. So try and be aware, and then write down what phrase you say because mine. <laughs> Mine was Guten Tagen. <laughs> Isn't that like janky, janky, thank you in German? I don't know, but I've been walking around my house going, Guten Tagen. Okay. Like for the last week, I've been editing and I'll go, Guten Tagen. Guten Tagen. <laughs> like you're making a little Guten song Tagen. out of it? or just... No, I just say that word. I don't even know what that means. Hey, you know, that's fine. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can't really like talk shit because sometimes... I remember I told you th- I do the thing with my fingers where I I don't know if Luke if, if you ever, if you can understand this but guys try to understand my brain right now when I okay. say this hold so, it up so the people so can okay see. so when I do this thing with my fingers like if I'm listening to a song so let's say that Lulu's song we've been throwing money in a spiral let's say yeah. that's the line yeah. I I do each finger is a beat or like a yeah, syllable um, like a syllable so we've been throwing money in a spiral and it satisfies me when I end on my thumb or my pinky so I have to go, go We've been throwing money in a spiral, and it like it perfectly worked. <laughs> That's when I'll get something stuck in my head, and I'll keep doing that on my hand. So if you ever really? see, if you ever see me like moving my hand like this, like just moving it around a little bit, that's what I'm doing. I do it all the time. So like ten syllable lines. Yeah, sometimes if it's ten syllables, ten syllable you get lines, onto ten it. syllable lines, ten syllable lines. That's perfect. I, I can I can know when something is five. <laughs> all right. When when it's a multiple of five, I can feel it. Yeah, I do a weird thing when I'm by myself. I do a What's weird that? thing. Tell me. So Tell you me. got you talk to yourself. You do the finger thing. <laughs> I will interview myself all the time. Oh, so it used to start. You it started as like a thing to keep me awake on long drives because I was mm. driving between Austin and Dallas a lot when I was in school, and so if I got sleepy, I would like interview myself. I would pretend because <laughs> sometimes I'd be listening to Pims. Or like, and I'd be pretending I was like on Pims, or I'd oh. be pretending like mm. I was being interviewed by Jimmy Fallon, and I'd like this big movie coming out. Yeah, <laughs> like I would be doing that, and like it's kind of fun though. It is fun, and yeah. I'd be like, yeah, you know, I just started out like as a humble actor, like down <laughs> in Texas, and and now you know all the lights. Now look at me. <laughs> the crowd's like ah. I'd, I I would do that, and I now I do it just for fun. Like if I'm in the car and I don't want to listen to music or a podcast, I'll just interview myself Will you ever give yourself like too. complex t- difficult questions to answer or is yeah. it more like oh yeah my, my new movie's coming i out. give myself practice with like hard questions sometimes self-therapy like, yeah like socially like relevant questions of, i just want to be i want to be prepared yeah you know? okay uh but, but you can't yeah be too prepared though you can't be too, it heart. can't be scripted but uh i i <laughs> it's, it's so funny to say that i just like am walking around talking and i do it in my apartment sometimes when my roommates are home and like one of them said like <laughs> Oh, like who do you play with, like on Xbox and stuff? And it's like I wasn't playing Xbox. I, <laughs> I was, was talking, just talking to myself. How loud do you talk to yourself? Normal volume. Yeah, he's got like to project. He's an actor, Kyle. He can't be sitting here like. Hey, I, I have a lot of conversations with like other people at out loud, like that aren't there. That aren't there. But yeah, I that's say it, literally talking to I'll, yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, but I like. <laughs> it's like a, it's. I have a lot of pretend <laughs> conversations with people. <laughs> Kyle's like, I don't talk to myself. I have conversations with people that aren't there. A lot of times. <laughs> Those are different. <laughs> they are different because it's like a different person, and I'm expecting what they'll say to me, and I'm okay, responding yeah. back. So sometimes it's That's like, what I do. I'm yeah, if yourself. I have like a super, like, uh, if I just, I, I make like weird ar- fights with people in my head. Oh, so I, like, I argue with people in my car when they aren't there before yeah. I'll argue with them in real life. And I win oh. every argument. I'm the king <laughs> when you're of arguing alone. myself. I'm undefeated. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. I can defeat any argument in my head. Yeah, so guys, let us know what phrases you say. I still, I've been, I was saying Guten Tag this morning before you guys got here. Don't know what it means, but I just realized I was doing. We've been throwing money in a spiral like that on my hand, the whole time. Yeah, wow. 
That's good. And I've been pretty much interviewing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the Luke's practice of interviewing himself is now paying off right paying here, off. right now. <laughs> Great. You would not have performed as well as you are if no. you hadn't done that. <laughs> exactly. It's a good thing you're so prepped. Mm-hmm. Guys, we've never told the story, but the first time we ever tried to record an episode of Pims <laughs> was at Luke's no, house. No, it was the second time. Was not the first time. The I thought time. it was like... we had the one in October. Like a, the test the one. The test one, yeah. Yeah. And then we tried <laughs> to record an episode at Luke's house, and we were just so bad at talking it was actually two years ago today because i got a snap that snap was it really two years puppy. ago on this day we were in texas at luke's house i was kyle was there helping me pack up to move back so we could officially start pims and we were like let's try and record an episode here like for fun dude we, and got we like, did for like 20 minutes not even and <laughs> we just like I, I don't know how you guys felt about it but for me i just like didn't know what to say i had nothing to offer <laughs> zero yeah, things to say it was weird because like we were like vibing <laughs> the rest of the weekend like talking yeah. all the time and then it's we as just... soon as the cameras came on we just froze up yeah and i had never really been on camera before so i i know for me that was like super nerve-wracking like i can talk all i want and then once the camera came on it was like oh shit yeah kyle and luke would be like talking i'd be setting up the cameras and they were talking great and then i sit down and we start <laughs> and kyle freezes up and I I had... mean, we all froze i yeah, froze up. i did too yeah um, we also d- we now. also like so if you see on like John's YouTube channel, there's a video called interrogating, interrogating oh, yeah. a professional Quidditch player. It's that same table and it's right after that. So yeah, yeah you guys did a whole thing. And I sat off to the side waiting yeah. for my <laughs> podcast. And then we did like 20 10, minutes, 15 minutes. Gave up. It was really sad. Cause we were like, yeah, this isn't going very well. Let's just stop. Let that can be like something else. 500th episode, like the biggest Patreon thing. <laughs> it's like yeah, you get to listen that. to that, <laughs> that train wreck. Do you have that still? I think I, I would love to see that. Unless, oh. like, unless it like made me self-conscious and I just deleted it to it. So it's off the face of the planet. Yeah, that's true. I've done that when it, with like things that I regret deleting. Cause I'm like, this would be so funny. Yeah, no, I still have footage. Um, years ago now i don't know when it was before we even started the pims i think uh luke wasn't here but it was like me kyle shim willig and then some of willig's friends from college and we were all drunk and we we're like dude let's all sit on the couch and i'll set up my camera and we'll all have a mic and let's just talk like not not really a podcast because we we were like we're not gonna ever post this anywhere yeah and like i have that footage Is, was it funny Someone fell. In, I think. Someone fell asleep, like in the middle of. That's pretty funny. Someone said something, and then like someone else talked, and then what do you think? And then he was asleep. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So I still have that, but like that will never see the light of day. Yeah. I don't know what else we talked about. It could have been some things on there that. Okay. Do you have any footage from like acting stuff that like <laughs> never got never got made or? Well, that's B-roll the thing. Footage? That's like the embarrassing thing is like some projects that I've been in. Like I don't think I'm doing a very good job, but like. I can't do anything about mm, it. Like it's, it's up there. there, but you know, that's, that's just the life. That's the progression that's though. That's just life. You yeah. know, but that does it, does it, wow. Does that ever happen where you, let's say you're filming a scene and like, you're not satisfied with your line, but they're like, that was good. Let's move on. Are you allowed to just be like, yo, no, that sucked. So it's not like you're not allowed or allowed to do it. It just depends on like your relationship with the director. Mm-hmm. And like, I had to do that recently. Like, we did one take of this like really intense scene and the director was like, okay, I think we're good. Like, and me and the other actor like, no, we need to do two more and then need to be back to back. Because like, if you, if like you take too long of a break, like the energy can kind of go away. And so it's just like, I need like two more, just really quick, just shoot one and then say action again and we'll go again. Hmm. And so it just depends. Like you can ask for it and they might not give it to you, but it depends on the relationship. Interesting. I mean, that would suck if you just were so disappointed by like that one take you had and you just, didn't think it was good at all, but they really liked it. Or yeah. if you think you crushed it and you're like, I'm not going to do one better than that. Mm. And then the director's like, all right, let's do it again. That too. Yeah, it is a bummer. But at the end of the day, like you're hired to make their vision come true. Yeah, and so it's yeah. just like, you're you're just doing a job. Like you're hired. Like if, if it comes out great, like it's not your movie, you know? Yeah. It's, but, yeah. You're just a part of it. I, I, just, I just feel like a lot of maybe people outside the movie business people that aren't big movie people would blame the actors for a bad performance a lot of people do over that. the director or whoever created the movie or whatever whoever or a lot of yeah. people can't separate when a movie is like when the acting is good but the movie's not like mm-hmm. you can have both like there can be a really yeah. well acted movie but like the story is just not good or something yeah. i'd say it's also hard to tell between like bad acting and just really bad writing <laughs> like bad dialogue yeah like it's just kind of hard to tell yeah because you could be a great actor but if you're given a shitty script like there's not much you it's can do It's hard to make something of it. That's true. Yeah. But 
I was thinking about this the other day and I wanted to bring it up here. Um, so on New Year's Eve or no, on New Year's Day, we were playing Monopoly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was thinking about this. I won. You did win. Uh, <laughs> it took a long time. But the reason you won is kind of like the basis of this thing. Monopoly is like the evils of capitalism, like illustrated. It's like you get rich early. Mm. There is not much that can stop you. Like you, you, and if you get down on your luck, if you get really poor, yeah, it's really hard to get back up. And I was like, that's crazy. I like, think true. I think that was the point. I know, but like, like when they made it, that was the but idea. Like, I don't think people. I think people see it as like, oh, business. Like, yeah, this is it. It's like not like the bad things of like the bad side it, of business. What it could be. <laughs> well, I think and it shows what a monopoly. Yeah. In the world can do. It can make someone all powerful and everyone else is fucked. Literally, mm-hmm. Kyle had like four or five hundred dollar bills and like ten hundreds, and like there's no way he was going to lose. All I had was one Monopoly. But though. he also I just got, got super really lucky. Lu- like, yeah, so he got yeah. down on his lucky. luck, but he got really lucky. Yeah. It's and true. then I you made know, a big gamble. I was like, you know, this is all I got and put all of my energy into the orange spaces, and it worked out. And then Nick, Nick got down early. He just. He went homeless. He went yeah, broke. He went homeless. It's true. He spent all of his money on properties. Yeah. That's true. Um, okay. <laughs> that was <laughs> really, no, that was good. That was get good. deep with you guys. Yeah, um, I love getting deep. Okay. Now, Luke, it's been forever since you've been on the show. By the way, guys, I don't, we didn't even mention this, but Luke has been on a previous episode a very long time ago. True. What number? 22. 22. Something like that. 22 or 21. Um, so if you guys, you know, listen, first of all, we were way worse back then. I guarantee it probably wasn't as fun as this one. I re-listened to it recently. Not that bad. I thought it was pretty funny. It was pretty good. Like I was really annoyed at the time because Kyle talked through like how a caterpillar like lives and like the phases of its life. And he went into way too much detail, (laughs) but it was a good episode. Talked about Disney rules. Oh, we did this weird game where we like had to explain something that we knew nothing about. And do our best to explain yeah. how it works. I think the concept was good. It's just, I don't think The people, execution wasn't nah, there. Yeah. I liked it. Go check it out. Um, Episode 22. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, so now we have, today we have an A&F of the week. And we actually have a new segment. Bump, 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 bump. Uh, we got this idea from one of our listeners. Uh, I... <laughs> I forget uh, what your name is, so I'm really sorry. I have it screenshotted, but I can't find it right now. Thank you, fan. You know who you are. They gave us an idea where basically once a week, so on the Monday episodes, Kyle and I will come into it with a word, a person, place, thing, or feeling. A noun or a feeling. A noun or a feeling, and we won't tell the other person what it is, and then we will go like three, two, one, and we'll say it or something, and then we're basically going to battle out or debate which one of those two random things is better. And then over the course of the whole season, we will develop a bracket and make basically a tournament of the overall just best thing. Yeah, it's. <laughs> what do we label the bracket? Uh, the battle bracket. No, no. This is this the battle. Is the bra- battle. This is the battle bracket. Yeah. So, <laughs> so welcome to battle bracket, guys. <laughs> we will be concluding on episode two hundred and forty-nine. I think. Yeah. So. Yes. Uh, Luke, do you want to be the battle bracket guy today? Yeah, I'll be. Uh, this is the battle bracket guy. Perfect. Um, so these two have not seen what they have written. Uh, this is the first matchup. And today we have McDonald's all day breakfast mm. versus great smelling hand soap. Okay, John oh, <laughs> John had McDonald's all day battle. breakfast. I had great smelling hand soap. Damn. What opening arguments, Kyle. Great smelling hand soap. Yeah, right off the bat. John's mom has the best smelling hand soap consistently. She she mixes it up. She surprises me. It gets me every time, every time I go into that same bathroom. And it's just, it's a little thing in my life that makes my day a little bit better. Like when I use good smelling soap and I'm just like, damn, that's good. And she mixes up the consistency. Sometimes it's it's the gel soap. Sometimes it's the foamy soap. Sometimes you get the little beads in there. Sometimes she'll even put a bar in there, which I don't like bars. I don't like the bars. Makes her hands like all like. Like yes, slimy. sticky. Yeah, yeah. It's like no, you know what I'm saying. Like if you ever Not wash really. your body with like yes. bar I soap, wash with bar soap, but d- like it's that it's residue. not as moist. You get that it's residue. Like, it's like dry. Not, you won't feel it I've now. Done so it my it's whole when life, you're in the so shower. No, the listeners will know. It feels sticky. Okay. Um, okay. Opening arguments. Yeah. So all day McDonald's all day breakfast. I, uh, I think the best item on the menu is the sausage McMuffin with no egg. And if you get the hash browns too, you know how good those can be when you put those together. I do. Um, you can eat at any meal of the day. It could be breakfast. It could be lunch, dinner. It could be drunk midnight meal. Okay. I just think it's it's pretty profound that now it's you can get it whenever you want. And I I, w- I will say the 
Uh, McDonald's breakfast is probably the best food they have on their menu, I would say. But you can't get McGriddles all day. That's the thing. Is McDonald's all day breakfast isn't McGriddles. Luke, can you weigh in on this? Yeah, what do you think? So far, what are your initial feelings? Okay, well, I will say that the breakfast uh, portion, the McGriddle is the best. And you can't get that all day. So that's mm. what Kai was saying, and I kind of agree. Mm. But not a lot of places do all day breakfast, true. and it's kind of clutch. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But, you know, when I eat my McDonald's and then I wash my hands after. Oh, you you wish they had better soaps. I wish they had better soaps it's sometimes. True. So what's more important? I don't know. I just know McDonald's. I'm going to leave it not feeling great. And hand soap, I guess I'll leave it smelling good things. You'll be sanitized I don't even know how during to com- COVID times. I, I, might, I think these. I have something that's going to help your argument, but oh, I have to say it. Please help it. You can go almost anywhere and find a McDonald's within range if you need to. You can't – very rarely do you find a lot of places with the great smelling hand soap. That's true. Like you have to be at like a someone's home. You're not going to go into a corporate building and have good smelling hand soap. And it's a it's a specific skill to have to find the good smelling soaps. Mm. And it's not really a skill to, you know. Yeah. See, I think I take it for granted because my mom is just so good at it. Yeah. See, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to <laughs> bash on my mom. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's a tough. That's that's a tough. I don't matchup. really know. <laughs> I don't know how to come to a conclusion you, well, here. You gotta. Mm. Mm. It, should the decision be like, what do I want right the, now? The, the or one is like, if one of these better? had to be wiped from existence, which one would you be less okay with, like not existing? That's easy. I'd me. probably rather have McDonald's all day breakfast than hand soap. Like, which one makes your life better? Well. <laughs> I would. I mean, I would. I would much rather McDonald's all day breakfast be wiped from the planet of the face oh, of the earth. It should be <laughs> because, like, I can still get it before ten thirty, and then, like, I that's don't. I just don't think that's as important as great smelling hand soap. That's true because if there's never any, all soap is just bland forever. That's true. Yeah, I'm gonna go with yours. All right, we got <laughs> our first winner okay. of this is the battle bracket. Uh, we don't have a pen, but we'll write that later. <laughs> all right, good so work, tune guys. in next Monday. It'll we'll be have a, two more words. Yeah, so next week it won't it won't be great smelling hand soap again because we're gonna go through if you guys can see here, we're gonna go through the entire bracket and then eventually we will come back to great smelling hand soap so versus something else. Great smelling hand soap will return, just not for like a couple three months. L- yeah. <laughs> so there you go, guys. All right, moving on to A and F of the week. Uh Kyle, who's your A this week? Okay, so my A this week, I don't really know if it's an A. I actually was really struggling for a long time to find an A. This is a common trend. And (laughs) I found this article of this dude that was so single that he was so tired of being single that he started a plan to get his friends out of relationships. Oh, he was Um, plotting against his friends? Yeah, right. How is that an A? Yeah, how is that an A? I guess it's not really an A. (laughs) I just couldn't find a better one. Well, did it work? Well, I don't know. I didn't read the article yet. <laughs> I was hoping we could re- go through it together. Okay. All right. Okay. So <laughs> you should read the article so, beforehand. So you're right. <laughs> See I if they're good. I, I, this was a late thing. Okay. So this guy made false accusations accusations of cheating over his friend that got 420,000 likes. Oh, and shit. there was a bunch of people like arguing in the comments like whether or not it was true. Um, that's pretty messed up. Yeah. That's yeah, really not fucked really up. a friend. And then what? He thinks that he can just get with his friend's ex girlfriend. No, no, I think he just wants his friends to not oh, be to in a relationship. Yeah, and I, this article, I don't really want to try to read that because it was like a weird article. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, this dude was so single and so lonely that his other friends were happy in relationships that he decided to break all of their relationships by f- lying. That does sound like an A. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a very good friend. Okay, that's not an A. But you know what? That's just something that needed to be shared. Okay. It did. I will say, when all the boys are single, like all of the boys right now are single, it's like, it's kind of clutch because everyone's always down to hang out. It's true. So if I was single and all the boys were not single, I wouldn't be able to hang out with you guys as much. Now, would I take it upon myself to sabotage all of you and make you unsingle or to make you single? No, I would not. But if I was in just the worst relationship ever, would yeah. you? And I and you were trying to tell me over and over, like, dude, you gotta. She just hits me, and she just <laughs> is the worst person ever. And you're just ch- telling me over and over, like, Kyle, get out of this relationship. Would you eventually go to the point of 
trying no. to break him up. Saboteur. No, I wouldn't. I, I'd be like, dude, that's your decision. But like, yeah, it's this, true. you got to get out. But if you don't do it, I mean, you don't do it. Yeah. That's on yeah. you. We'd be honest with you. Yeah. I'm going to go with an. Oh, Wilkes calling me. A lot of people say. A lot of people say they're going to, like, I'll be honest with you. But then, like, a lot of times they're not because, like, I've been in a relationship and then I get out and then everyone's like, oh, she fucking sucked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, but, well, then why didn't you tell me that? Okay. But that's the thing, though, is like a relationship could be going amazing. Like, the other person is making you super, super happy. And then if it ends and they, like, hurt you like let's say like your ex like hurts you really bad then like oh they're such a bitch like yeah, that's people... it that's it's not like during the relationship we want to get you out but like as your boys like we would like now hate that person if they didn't handle it correctly yeah yeah i hate when people like really like some like for example i know someone who they were dating and they were in a great relationship and my mom really liked this person then the those people ended up breaking up you know, nothing too bad. Like no one did anything horrible. They just broke up. And then all of a sudden my mom's like, oh yeah, I, I never liked that person. Like the, I could just tell that they weren't good from the get go. And I'm like, mom, that's yeah. not true though. Like you liked them. Things yeah. just didn't work out. Like they're a good person. I just hate when people like all of a sudden flip and they're like, I knew all along they were terrible. Yeah. But also at the same time, like maybe for her, maybe she knew, well, I guess that's different, but I think a lot of people also get mad because they find out all the things that their friend was hiding from them about the relationship because then like once you guys break up then you spill everything like oh she did this this and this and like then yeah. this happened then it's like wow she does suck <laughs> or he does suck or whatever yeah but cause, it's because i think a lot of times like you just keep that between you two yeah and not sharing that with everyone yeah i'd be willing to sacrifice some war zone time if you, some war zone time if you guys got some girlfriends thanks love to, i'd love to meet not looking who, for it. i'd love to meet whoever you guys end up with That'd be so cool. It's like another like another one of the boys. Dude, kind of. Me too, man. I'd love to meet her one day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't wait till I meet her. <laughs> yeah. So anyone out there? If you have like a sister. <laughs> that, that's just you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'd actually don't want to date a fan. That would be kind of weird. No, that yeah. would be weird. Um all right. My A this week. This is a headline of an article. I only found the headline, but we're just going to pretend, assume this is real okay. and roll with it. Teenager slept with his bully's sister, girlfriend, and mother after being called a virgin by the bully three months ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that <laughs> real? Fucking go. Is that real? I don't know. Probably. Uh, <laughs> that's how you show a, b a bully what's up. I'm, mm. That's an A for probably. Wait. That so, is such an so A. Wait, so wait. Girlfriend, mother, and and sister, sister. Okay. of the bully. I'll say everything's an A except for the mother because it's probably a child. <laughs> but what? <laughs> probably yeah. wasn't a teenager. Child. Let's say yeah. I he, doubt they're he's, eighteen. He's eighteen. Yeah, I, 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 eighteen. He's a senior okay. in high school. Yeah, dude. Good, good for good for that guy. <laughs> eighteen, dude. Yeah. So a big buff dick who's like the long snapper who thinks he's cool comes and bullies you and he calls you short and gives you a swirly and he says you're a virgin. You take it upon What's your mom's name? <laughs> yeah, so you look up his mom in the school phone book. Ah, uh, it's so fucked, dude. You There's call her. No way. How does that happen? How do you even like? In there, three there's so months. much that goes into that. In three months, there's so much that goes into that. They have to like him, and then he has to like talk to. Dude, I don't. I don't get how you did that. I, I just I, that blows my mind. <laughs> it, listen, it's probably not real. Hey, but, you know? but that would be sweet. <laughs> Our podcast sweet. thrives in not not diving into details and just reading headlines. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's what I just read the headline in my article and I was like, that's an A. That's guy's yeah, awesome. And you started to read the article and, and then it gave up. I realized it was an F. So true. We don't <laughs> read articles anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, headlines are truth. Yes. That yeah. is an A. That's sick. Um, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Kyle, who's your F okay. this week? My F is um pretty much everyone that doesn't have Peacock because the office oh, is finally the gone. Office is gone. Actually, is it actually gone though? I haven't checked. It's gone. Yep. Yeah, I think okay. it's January first. Well, it's on Peacock, so I got it. Except I'm I have Peacock for free, and I'm not getting Peacock. So it sucks. The thing is, if it's if you're at this point and you still haven't watched The Office, like you're probably not going to. That's true. You know? Yeah. Like you've had enough years to watch it on Netflix. They got yeah. bonus footage though. Was there? I thought you guys looked last night for it and couldn't find any. No, I hope not. Oh well, I mean, I guess like it mainly hurts the people that like to rewatch it all the time because that's the only people who are probably watching it now. Yeah, there aren't a lot of people watching it for the first time. That's true, but I mean, in the past like couple years, I've shown it to. I a showed couple it to my parents people. last year for the first time. Um, but yeah, it's a very sad day. Uh, 
Luke, favorite character from The Office. Go. Dwight. Why? I just love that character. It's so funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, I don't know. I I have a. I was talking to Kyle about this yesterday. I have grown to not like Jim like at mm, all. Agreed. No. At all. Well, I just don't. He just seems kind of mean. He's sometimes kind of a douche, he's kind of mean. And uh, but I mean, his relationship with Pam is still cute. Uh, he's still kind of funny. But I think he's, he's confident. I think he's very confident. He is yeah. confident. The, the thing that bugged me was when on the, in a wedding scene where there he's giving his speech and he's talking about how like he was in love with Pam the whole time and like Pam didn't want him. It's like you're throwing your your fiance under the bus right now. But it's true. She didn't yeah, want him. Yeah, but you him. don't need to give that big speech it's like she didn't want me for years and no, I persisted but and it, it was wholesome. It was more like nah. like she grew to love me and I've I love her. Uh, it rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> I, I just I, that's not what show. I would say. Still yeah. great. Jim's great. I've seen Love um, you, John there's Krasinski. a community of people that that hate Pam and that yeah, think she's just hate, the worst. A lot of people hate Pam. I think the people that hate Pam are people that are sad that a woman is like speaking up a lot more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like don't yeah. want women to I don't know. I think it's people that have deeper issues. I like everyone. I'm cool with Pam. I love everyone in that I show. I love everyone in general. I think Kevin <laughs> I do love everyone. I don't like Ryan. Ryan's the worst. I fucking hate Ryan. <laughs> Ryan's great. It's crazy that he's... Isn't he the he main produced, writer? Yeah. He Yeah, he's a writer and he also is a producer. Didn't you go to high school with John Krasinski? Yeah. Wow. They went to high school together. That. We went to high school together, so all I'm saying... If you ever Luke's Ryan. making something... Luke told me, Kyle, that one day when he gets a movie debut, the red carpet at the, the Chinese theater in Hollywood, that he'll get you and me tickets to go. Yeah. To and the then debut. they'll be interviewing us. Yeah, you guys can wear your Pims merch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we wear a Pims suit. <gasps> oh, oh my we God. should get some Pims suits. <laughs> no, and it's like actually really high end. Where like you know the football gloves, where when you put them together, they make a logo. Yeah, so when you put your suit jacket together, yeah, then it's the logo. But when <laughs> you, put you just it apart, or you open it up, and it's like just your faces. <laughs> oh. It's us with a microphone, <laughs> dude. That would be awesome. That'd be sweet. Um, yeah, you guys are invited. Hell yeah, sweet. All right, my F this week. Have you guys heard of the KFC console? What? There, KFC, there's a thing called KFC Gaming on Twitter where it's through the food brand, but they have another brand called yeah. KFC Gaming where they're engaged in the gaming community. <laughs> and KFC is literally releasing a console. Let's go. And like, I literally, I've seen videos about it. Um, I've seen so much about it, and I thought they were all jokes. I thought it was a meme, but it's real. Uh and I wanted to tell you guys what this console offers. Okay. <laughs> Free chicken? KFC console is surprisingly legit, and yes, it has a chicken warmer. In the console? Who said fast food companies wouldn't enter the console or can't enter the console war? We've seen plenty of fast food wars on the tw in the 21st century, but we never expected to see a fast food chain enter the video game console war. Yet here we are, scratching our heads after KFC made a left field announcement that has us wondering if we're living in a simulation. Last week, the fried chicken chain officially launched the KF. It's the KF console. KFC. KFC. So it's KFC console. Kentucky Ansel. Fried Console. <laughs> yeah. A gaming console that not only runs games at top level specs, but includes a chicken chamber to keep your chicken warm while you play. <laughs> Imagine you're texting <laughs> your boys. It's like, yo, I'm going to get on KFC real quick. You all want to play Warzone? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Throw some I'm going to throw my chicken my... in. That's uh, actually. I, I just, like, why are you doing that? Like, why? Why are you making a console? Monopoly. I don't know <laughs> how they're going to... They're not going to compete with anything. No, it's just going to be a... It, it seems like the people up top are like, we it's need gotta to be like, enter in. Like It's got to be like some like niche... That, like, I, like I don't know. Like, it reminds me of like the like a like, remember when Burger King would give you a video. Like there was an old Xbox game you could get at Burger King if you ordered a certain menu item. No, I feel like it's like that, but way more extreme. Where like a few loyal KFC fans have this as kind of a joke. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been to a Burger King in my life. I've been like three times, and it sucks every me time. Me and John ate a lot of KFC when we lived together in, <laughs> in KFC's LA. Fire. We ate a lot. Like, yeah. could you imagine if there was a console involved? <laughs> Now I don't That'd know how I don't know how the games work or anything. Like I don't know if you're playing with Xbox people or if you're like it's like a chicken your own <laughs> dedicated as a controller. <laughs> um, but what is cool is they showed I saw a video. It literally, like on the console, it has a whole compartment where you lift up and pull out, and it's like a hot, warm thing where if you want to warm up chicken or food, you put it in there, shove it in, and as you're playing, it heats up your food. I just can sense some some problems with it. It's like you know. It, you're heating up your console, which it's 
consoles overheat a lot. Yeah. Now you're getting crumbs involved that can get into the cracks. Oh, there's and a, shit. Dude, there's a separate compartment, no, bro. They know. Uh, there's they a separate know. compartment, but I just know if you use it a thousand <laughs> times, you're getting crumbs in your discs. I don't know if you guys have talked about this already, but did you guys see the KFC Hallmark movie? No. What? Mario Lopez is playing Colonel Sanders in a rom com KFC real movie. <laughs> Why? Dude. What is KFC doing? Dude? I, it's like it's everything. like Kentucky Fried Love or something. I'm gonna try and find it. But dude, I saw that and it's not a joke. There's Bro, an actual movie. That's what I'm saying. Everyone, th- all this stuff KFC is doing, no one realizes that it's real. So like, I'm just so confused. It's an F because no one's gonna buy it. But <laughs> what? it's called a recipe for seduction. <laughs> that's Mario it, Lopez. That's Mario Lopez, and he's playing hot Colonel Sanders. Is it a joke, though? <laughs> no, it's a real movie. Why? It's a lifetime <laughs> KFC God. mini movie. Sorry for yelling, but that's just so stupid. A mini movie? So it's yeah, like an so hour? maybe it's like an hour. Maybe like a limited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a lot of questions about the Mario Lopez KFC lifetime mini movie. I want to watch that Damn. shit. Yeah, we got to watch it. There you have it, guys. This was fun. Luke. Are you going to leave a review on the Apple Podcast app? Not yet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but I recommend everybody out there to do it so I can do it eventually. Hell, yeah. Great. Walk so he can run. Exactly. I had a lot of fun. This has been forever since we had you on again. Um, guys, Luke is going to be a famous actor. I mean, he's already a famous actor, Luke. Mm. But he's going to be. Yeah. That's my name. Famous actor, Luke. Have you been recognized? No. <laughs> oh, me neither. Dude, can you you have to like call text us the first time you get recognized in public. Yeah. You guys, I think you guys will probably ha- it'll happen to you before it happened to me. Uh, I don't know. Yet. We'll see. But uh yeah, guys, definitely support Luke's stuff. Go follow him. Where can they follow you and check out your movies and all that jazz? You can follow me at Luke Mize on Instagram and then I have one movie out on Prime Video called The Bob Zula. You can go watch that. And yeah, just follow me for updates. I got lots of things coming up. Yes, I've seen Stay I've updated. seen one of your unreleased things. I have Pretty an unreleased film called Hundred Flowers Project going on the festival circuit in 2021. Filming another feature film uh, in the spring, so things will things will come if you follow me. This kid know? is everywhere. Sweet, Kyle. Where can they follow you and all of your acting gigs? Uh, Instagram at Kyle Stafford 36. Uh, stay there for the updates of my acting. Uh, follow the podcast at Pim's Podcast, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Pim's Podcast where you can get extra content every single week. It's now up to 10 videos a month now on Patreon. Uh, so there's a five, ten, and fifteen dollar tier. You can pledge and you get a bunch of extra stuff. You could even potentially get pictures of Kyle's feet. So <laughs> just extra bonus. I don't even have that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So check it out. If you guys love the show and want extra content, it's there for you. You guys can follow me at Hey Narwhal on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. There's new episodes of this show every single Monday and Thursday. Tell your friends about it. The best way for it to grow is word of mouth. Um, we spent a lot of money on ads over the last couple of years, but it's a huge thanks to you guys for telling people about it because that's really the best way. So Drop a like if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, go subscribe over there. We're almost at 3,000 subs. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Goodbye. See ya.